Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Buddies podcast. So in today's YouTube video, we are going to be doing a tier list video since many people have been asking us for a while. So we are going to be ranking phones sub 30k. I know many of you guys want new phones, and even the market has kind of become stale. So you don't know what to buy at this point. And there there are few new entrants which look pretty interesting. So. We're gonna rank them in like different tiers, starting off with easy to recommend. Like this is an easy recommend if you're looking for something safe and good. This is the one you should go for. It targets a niche audience, maybe like gaming or like if you have cam, if you like camera a lot, if you like really fast charging or extremely big battery life. This is the niche audience. Hard to recommend because. I don't like this. Might be for you, but for majority of the people, we won't recommend this. And why does this even exist? It's overpriced, and I don't think so. It should be sold. Those are the main things. And then there's a D rank, which I'll just leave it as F. Basically, it does shouldn't be sold as a phone at this point. Yeah. So, uh, starting off with the phones in order: the A fifty two S by Samsung, five G phone. Then the M fifty three, which is also. A phone in from which is a phone from twenty twenty two, then after that we have the iQOO Neo six, then we have the Moto Edge thirty, the One Plus Nord two T, the Nothing Phone one, the Poco F four, and then we have two phones from Realme. One is the Realme nine Pro, and the other one is the Realme GT Master Edition. So. Athar will be leading this episode, giving us information about the phones, and I'll be helping him rank it. So let's start off with the first phone, which is from Samsung, the A fifty two S five G. Yeah, so the A fifty two S five G was, I think, the most popular phone from twenty twenty one. It comes with the Snapdragon seven seventy eight processor, which is a, which is uh, one of the most popular five uh, G processors. From last year and even this year, the seven seven eight G plus is also being used in some phones. Then you get a pretty decent camera setup, sixty four plus twelve plus five plus five. No uh, camera which I can say is um, useless, so that is good. Then you get a one twenty hertz Super AMOLED display, and Samsung displays are the best in the world, so there's no complaint about that. And you get a thirty two megapixel selfie, and luckily it supports four K. Recording because like many phones from twenty twenty two and sub stop support for four K. I don't know why. And you get an under display fingerprint scanner for four thousand five hundred mAh battery, fast charging of twenty five watt. So all those are the charging could have been more considering that some of the other phones come with sixty five watt or stuff. So that could be a downgrade for some people. But overall, I feel this is still a pretty good phone and from twenty twenty one, and it can be easily recommended for people. Who are not like gamers, or who maybe like for parents and stuff, who want a like pretty like reliable, and because Samsung is also reliable, so it's um, kind of like an easy recommend. So that I mean, it's like a no nonsense phone. It gets many things right, and the software support is also I guess three years, so there's no need to worry about that also. And Samsung has been no. Uh, Known for uh, giving like regular software updates, so I think I'd put it in easy recommend. Now here's where I have a different take. While I do like the Samsung Galaxy A fifty two S five G, and honestly, I like Samsung's whole A lineup only. I think in India it is overpriced when you compare it from straight specs. And now I I know I always say don't go directly by the specs, but the competitors definitely have uh, better specs and. Are generally a newer phone, so where this is a phone from like twenty twenty one September, and maybe we are getting a revision soon. So that's one thing you have to look out for before buying this phone. The display is probably the best of in this phone, but because of Samsung and their technology, and but if you go by sheer stats or like even like performance, this is not the best you would get at this price range. But that's just Samsung for you. I still think I would put it as an easy recommend because unlike all these other phones in the list, maybe the Motorola and the Nothing are the exceptions. This feels like a more premium phone, and the premiumness really puts it up there because I think uh, for a phone that feels a bit more premium, generally the experience is better. And I don't know for phones like like it feels like almost a flagship level 
the A series is almost a flagship. The M series just feels like a Indian performance substituted version of that. Of that, so the experience is slightly better, and I think you get better features in the A lineup. Even software support is much better, so that's why I would put it in the easy recommend section, like how Atal said. Now moving on to the M fifty three five G. Yeah, before that, uh, the revision is out, like the A fifty three, but we wouldn't recommend it over the A fifty two S because it's just not a proper upgrade. I mean, the chipset is the Dimensity nine hundred or something, which is kind of less powerful than the seven seventy eight, and the other specs are also kind of a downgrade only. So that's why I picked on the A fifty two S, even though the A fifty three was out. So A fifty two S goes to the easy recommend. The next one is uh, the M fifty three, and M fifty three is twenty twenty two's revision of M fifty two, and it comes with the MediaTek Dimensity nine hundred here also, hundred and eight megapixel main sensor. But then here they have done the eight megapixel ultra wide and two two megapixel depth and macro thing. So that's kind of bad. They could have put a sixty four megapixel main instead of hundred and eight. But yeah, that's kind of a downgrade. Then you get a super AMOLED display, 120 hertz, 6.7 inch. You get a huge battery, 5000 mAh, but still 25 watt charging. Considering like some of the other phones here have 65 watt, it could be a deal breaker. And you get a side mounted fingerprint scanner. There are a lot of people who prefer under display fingerprint scanner, so that is also a thing you might have to consider. Uh, overall, this phone is more um, downsides than a thing to recommend, but this phone is. I mean, M fifty two was also one of the best selling phones uh, last year. So, but M fifty three is kind of disappointing. So, I think I'll put it in hard to recommend, but it's still a good phone. Uh, but there could have been something done better. I still recommend the M fifty two S over any other uh, mid range Samsung phone right now. If you're looking for a Samsung phone, particularly. Yeah, so like Athar was saying, I would also put in the M fifty, the M fifty three in the hard to recommend section, because I just don't like the way it looks, the design, and even the materials used in the M series have all always been really bad. I don't know if they changed the backup, but the plastic they used in the back for many of the M series and F series phones used to easily get scratched and gave the device a really bad look after some time. Uh, right now it's going for twenty seven thousand for the eight gigs variant. Um, honestly, the, I feel like you don't get a premium experience with this phone. That's one thing you're missing out when you're uh, when you're buying the M series or any phone from the M lineup. And that's where I would recommend the A fifty two over this. Granted, this is cheaper, so if you really don't care about the experience, you can definitely go for this. Um, uh, but this does have some thermal throttling issues. I remember when it launched, many people were complaining about that. Uh, if you're able to get the M fifty two five G for a good price, I would recommend that phone too. Uh, possibly four thousand, five thousand lesser than this, then get it. But at this point, from what I'm seeing, the price is almost the same as the M fifty three, the or the exact same. At that time, I don't know. Some people still said get the M fifty two over the M fifty three, uh, but at the same price. But I don't know about. I'm not sure about that one. But if you're able to get it at a much cheaper price, I would recommend the M fifty two over the M fifty three. And I slowly feel like Samsung is trying to kill off the M lineup. It doesn't seem interesting anymore, like it did before. Moving on to the next, the Ico Neo six. Yeah, so the Ico Neo six like seems to be the most ideal phone under twenty five thousand right now. I mean, not twenty five, under thirty thousand. So you get the Snapdragon eight seventy chipset, which is one of the most stable. Uh, flagship chipsets in a while, like we have seen heating issues, issues with triple eight and stuff. So <clears throat> that way, eight seventy is a bit less. So that is the main advantage. Then you get uh, AMOLED one twenty hertz display, which is six point two six six point six two inches large. Then you get a sixty four megapixel main sensor, eight megapixel ultra wide, and two megapixel macro, and a sixteen megapixel selfie. But uh, here, because Ico comes under Vivo, the Um, Vivo's camera expertise can be used by Ico. So the photos that come out with the come out from the main 64 megapixel sensor is really good. So that and but the other downside is that you don't get 4K recording on the uh, selfie camera. But that is just a trend of 2022 right now. 
you get a 3 you don't get a 3.5 mm headphone jack the under display fingerprint scanner works pretty well yes yeah, so you get a 4700 mAh battery with 80 watt charging which jico claims can get 50% battery in 12 minutes and 100% battery in 32 minutes which is pretty decent overall i feel it's a pretty good phone and it doesn't target only gamers so <clears throat> i'd put it in easy recommend because it has overall good features and stuff so yeah i agree with what athar was said um but ico still as a brand i don't know why it still hasn't i'm still not completely intrigued by the whole ico idea and i don't even know if they're actually selling well uh this phone definitely looks interesting though much better than the OnePlus or even the M53 although it's mo- slightly more priced and if you wait for the right time i feel like uh, you might get a discount like right now also there's a sale going on you'll get a 1000 rupee coupon on it on amazon um but from the pictures the build looks pretty premium at least for the dark blue color there's like two other colors too and uh, i would suggest getting the 8 gigs variant instead of the 12 gigs i feel like 12 gigs is then it reaches the you know, over 30k range where there are other players and i feel like this is probably not the best at that price but that being said the design all it looks very nice but it is a generic design i've seen this on many other phones um and yes this is a gaming oriented phone but uh it it doesn't seem like one like all the specs are completely fine i don't know about the software about a vaiku but definitely specs wise just straight specs the display is really really good the battery is okay uh, this fast charging that compensates for it not having a 5000 milliamp hour battery uh, but there's a really smooth display like with uh, 360 hertz touch sampling rate which is kind of crazy and yeah 64 megapixel camera and things so i still i'm completely not sure about iku but from what i've heard it's really really good so i think uh, if you're going sub uh, sub uh, 30k this is a good phone to buy software experience is definitely not the best and many people are talking about like how iku like the phone takes lots of your personal data for software updates and things like that so be careful about that uh, but that being said i think the phone's pretty decent i'd put it in uh, not easy to recommend but not targets a niche audience so i'd just leave it at easy to recommend but you need to know before what you're getting before you're going um i could definitely is innovating but uh, I don't know. I'm still not completely sold with the whole Aiku idea. Uh, moving on to the next phone, which is the Motorola Edge Thirty, and I thought we'll just tell its specs now. Yeah, so the Moto Edge Thirty is kind of a niche phone, mainly for those people who want like clean Android and maybe like if they want to give to some elder who doesn't like know what to. do it like if there are like bloatware and bugs and stuff they get paranoid so it's better they they have a clean android experience so i think that's a niche, it's a niche or uh, that i'd put it under the target niche category and it's a compact phone as well you get a 6.5 inch display and you get a 144 hertz refresh rate which is pretty good and uh, the processor is 778g plus which is like a slight increment over the 778g so that that and you get 50 megapixel main sensor uh, with ois and a 50 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel depth your 50 megapixel ultra wide is okay and um, i mean like moto is generally weak in the camera department but it's doing pretty well i mean it's, this i remember seeing the reviews and the camera was perfor- performing pretty well compared to the edge 20 series and stuff so that's a good thing and the selfie camera is 32 megapixel and it does say 4k recording here but i don't think it supports 4k in india at least i don't know why but okay i get a 4020 mah battery with 33 watt charging which i think is enough so i think overall i put it in targets a niche category um, segment because uh, there are other options at this price but if you want a clean android experience and a compact slightly more compact phone at 6.5 inches then you can check this out 
otherwise you can uh, i would check out the a52s or maybe the iconeo 6 and stuff so i feel this is a more niche focused phone but what would you what would you put it in um well i feel like i would put it in easy recommend section but yes i think it at this point if, if i would want to say it, it kind of does target a niche audience it's for a person who wants a no nonsense phone no bloatware very simple but good looking elegant design a more premium experience than what most of the other phones like the iq or whatever can offer that's why i like i really like this phone uh, i think the dark blue color also looks pretty good uh, specs wise yes um if you compare it like the screen is not as big and things like that but i think uh, the processor is the exact same as the uh, a52s and yes it has only a 50 megapixel camera but i think the experience is really really good you don't get the best updates that's one problem of having a motorola phone but uh, with gcam motorola phones their camera is also really like good if you get, if you're able to get gcam out of the box it isn't that great but for the clean experience i think this is a for it's for a niche audience especially the people who want a no nonsense stock android phone with no ads and no weird data uh, rules and things that you have to give this data or whatever so yeah targets a niche audience moving on to the oneplus nord 2 the oneplus nord 2t just doesn't make sense for me <clears throat> honestly my theory and some other like i i remember hearing this from some other youtuber uh, they said that i mean they said that the oneplus nord 2t was just uh, like launched so that they could cover up the oneplus nord 2 blast cases and stuff so and honestly i don't like the design the rear camera that it looks like there are so many cameras but actually it's just a 50 megapixel main sensor with ois plus 8 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel depth which is just not uh, what you would expect from a th- sub 30k phone right now um then the processor is just the, an a slight upgrade from the dimensity 1200 to the dimensity 1300 it's just like there's no there's no difference in the number of cores there's nothing it's just like the hyper engine is a one generation up also you get a 90 hertz amoled here instead of a 120 hertz or 144 hertz as motor less providing so that all these are kind of bummer bummers right now and uh, i if you already own the nord 2 there's no use of upgrading and i don't see any new person get having an incentive to purchase this phone so for me i put it in uh, why does this even exist yeah i'd also probably put in that i don't know why the design is really appealing for me i think there's like some sort of symmetry to it which i know i said that i don't like oneplus phones designs but this one's camera actually looks better than the one that the pro has which is kind of weird for me at least i mean it's personal preference um i don't really like how none of the phones in this whole uh, budget have any like symmetry in the bezels the bottom chin is always a bit more which that's that's one thing i really don't like and the specs are also not that great i think oneplus is just trying to get away with lots of stuff with the specs like giving a 90 hertz display when all their competitors are giving a much better uh, refresh rate display so yeah oneplus is definitely seeing that now that they have that brand position they are taking leverage of it and i wouldn't want to recommend this to phone to almost anyone then again the software experience is decent but i don't think so i'd want anyone to go through a oneplus phone anymore so yeah moving on to my person fa- favorite at this point the nothing phone yeah the nothing phone one has like been hyped the most in the past past month or so and there nothing being a new brand it has some quality control issues which they are trying to fix so if you are really into this phone i suggest you wait for probably a month more so that the so that your unit doesn't have any quality control issues it's not happening to everyone but there are a lot of cases being reported of green tint issue then the cam the bezel around the camera going off and the the transparent rear have having dust and non like all those stuff and the camera having moisture so those things kind of right now are um putting nothing on the back foot but 
specs specs wise the phone is perfect you get a 6.55 inch pretty compact oled 120 hertz display uh 50 plus 50 megapixel cameras no nonsense in the cameras you get wireless charging the uh, which is uh which is missing in many phones in almost all the phones in this price range the battery is 4500 mah you get uh 33 watt charging and which is uh, pd which is power pd certified so you can charge your phone with your laptop charger and stuff so that is good there and uh, the main thing is the design is like very very unique you won't find i mean the phone will stand out um, uh, among the other phones so that all of those things kind of uh, ma- make this phone stand out a lot and um, also that nothing is focusing a lot on their software experience the they have not added a single bloatware and they have kept it close to stock android uh, with just customizations for their glyph interface and maybe like the settings menu for their nothing your one and stuff so th- <clears throat> that way they have tried to keep their software experience very minimal like very premium by not providing too many bloatware and stuff and also like software upgra- updates updates uh, they are working on, on it seriously so that way also it's pretty good but the thing is i think ranjit in his review was telling that after the third ot update which came pretty recently he's facing a lot of issues so i think i'm sure nothing has like a team which is focusing on that right now so i they, nothing is still like an upcoming brand right now and for the first phone they have launched it pretty good so i think i put it in uh, easy to recommend or even maybe niche because there are not a, a lot of people who like fancy designs like most people want a simple design for their phone and because ultimately they put a case on it for protection so yeah i agree with oh, what athar said and especially about this phone i also think it targets a niche audience a person like who likes or maybe a very different software experience or does like who wants a phone which seems a bit more like class apart the experience is much much better but that being said i wouldn't recommend this phone to everyone because knowing that it has a few problems especially with the quality control it's a new up and coming brand you don't know how things are going to go so this one i'd only recommend to the fanboys the people who want that a uh, really old oneplus vibe back where you paying money and although you're not getting at that time you could get the best uh, specs for the price but at this time you're not getting the best specs for the price but the experience is what rules it all so for someone who values that experience i think this phone is the one you have to definitely go for um i think uh, that's it for the nothing phone one i would say it's between an easy recommend targets a niche audience if uh, their quality control is better i think it would be in the easy recommend section along with the iq and the a52s moving on to the poco f4 yeah the poco f4 is also kind of a niche product targeted at performance users and maybe kind of multimedia users because you get amoled 120 hertz huge 6.67 inch display and uh, the processor is the Snapdragon 870 similar to the Ico Neo 6 you get a 64 megapixel main sensor with OIS 8 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel macro and uh, as far as i remember in the reviews the camera is pretty decent like 64 megapixel main camera gives pretty decent shots and uh, you also get a 20 megapixel selfie camera but here also it's capped to 1080p why no 4k i don't understand then you don't get the yeah, 3.5 mm headphone jack which is kind of sad you get a side mounted fingerprint scanner but i mean there are a lot of people who still prefer under display but i'm fine with side mounted you get a 4500 mah battery with uh, 67 watt power charging pd certified and uh, i feel this is like an ideal t- setup for battery battery like 4500 mah battery with 67 watt charging if you go above 67 watt it would kind of becomes overboard in my opinion so i think overall this is a pretty good phone and i the design looks clean there's there no much uh, like gla- like there's no much glitter and glamour and stuff so it, i think i'll put it in the niche section because it's only for those people who want like a multimedia focused phone with a uh, good performance because of the large display and there are people who, who don't like me ui and who like me ui so depending on that so uh yeah so 
I would also put in the niche audience bracket because I know there are many people who absolutely loathe me to MIUI and there are some who really, really like MIUI. So I think at this point for almost all the Xiaomi phones, I think this MIUI is the one factor that has many people ma making their decisions about the phones, especially at this price range when you're able to get a nothing phone. I would recommend this to the people who just like MIUI. Moving on to the next phone, which is the Realme 9 Pro. Yeah, so the Realme 9 Pro Plus is kind of a phone which is hard to recommend because the only thing good about it is the 50 megapixel main sensor with OIS, which is the IMX766 sensor, which has been put. And uh, they made huge claims that it's you can compare the photos to the iPhone and the Pixel and stuff. And I think some people who did compare it, the it actually performs well, like it compares to a Pixel and it does even better than a Pixel, but you can't compare it to an iPhone or a Samsung. So they just overhide the camera. The other specs are okay. You get a 6.4 inch display, which I feel is compact compared to the others right now, but it's only 90 Hertz, which is kind of a bummer when you get 120 Hertz and all the others right now. So that and then the chipset is a MediaTek 9, Dimensity 920 which is not that powerful compared to the 870 or the 778G, the other phone. So that, and in the camera setup, the main sensor is the only thing that's good. Then you get an 8 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel macro and a 16 megapixel selfie. And the selfie doesn't support uh, 4K again. You get a 100 display fingerprint scanner, 4500 mAh battery with 60 watt charging, um, which is uh, PD certified. So that is also ideal battery scenario, but honestly, I feel it's hard to recommend just like because of the 90 hertz display and the cameras like being the only main highlight and the performance and other stuff have been compromised. Down. They just hype the camera. So if you want a good camera under 25,000, if you can get it around 2021, 20, 22 during sale and you want a good camera phone, then you can check it out. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, I don't know much about this phone, but I really, really do not like the design. And uh, I've seen many people have this phone, like this phone and like a phone that looks exactly like this. And I feel like the design itself is just really repelling for some reason. Um, <coughs> and even the specs, like it has like only a 90 hertz display at this price range which again same thing which we said for oneplus was one of the reasons why we added to the why does this exist uh, section um and i don't know i just don't like this phone at all there's nothing interesting going on with it and i i feel the total opposite way about the realme master edition so it's kind of sad that i have to put this phone in the probably hard to recommend or why does this even exist section the camera is decent but like it's not great like even the in display fingerprint like i i don't know i've heard people say that realme's in display fingerprint uh, is not very accurate and then there's just the 90 hertz display also which is another which is another so they also put this gimmicky thing called heart rate monitor which monitors the heart rate of even fruits and vegetables if you place it on the fingerprint scanner. So that's just like super funny. And yeah. Just and like they could it spend the R&D and the research on something more important. <coughs> and yeah, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which is better than the one, uh, than some of the phones, or not the OnePlus, but yeah. Um, I remember seeing the video Athar was talking about. I think Techburn or someone made a video about that. And uh, yeah, this is a common thing with most fingerprint sensors. I don't know what you exactly do to uh, make it not get confused between these things. I know the technology it uses, but I don't know how Apple or other brands like Samsung some don't get this reading. But brands like me, uh, MI and their MI band also, they recommend they get like a heart rate for random stuff like my bottle yeah so i don't know what they have to do or like what it's definitely not they're not faking the results of the heart rate i know that but there's this it has like something that you time it properly or something like that i don't know exactly but 
yeah just i'm keeping this phone in the hard to recommend section moving on to the realme master edition which is a really interesting and good looking phone yeah and i feel this is kind of a niche phone but at the same time easy to recommend because the the niche factor is the design especially the gray color one with the which has the band type of thing that first of all it looks pretty premium and the bands give it a good grip so that those are like the advantages of that back but if you don't like that design there are normal colors also like i think there's a black and also like a rainbowish color so if you don't like this design you can check the other things out other colors out but you get a 120 hertz super amoled display 6.43 inches pretty small um it was launched last year so it comes with android 11 out of the box i'm not sure if it's upgraded to android 12 yet hopefully it has you get a 64 megapixel main sensor 8 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel macro not that great but um i i don't remember how good the camera is you get 32 megapixel selfie camera and here it does say tap to 1080p i don't know why but okay you get a 3.5 mm jack which is good and uh, you get a 100 display fingerprint scanner 4300 mah battery with 65 watt charging and uh, i think mainly like the design kind of attracted me and the display is also good and uh, the cameras kind of lack but honestly i i was recommending this to people just because of the design i don't know why but the design really caught my attention for this phone so i'd put it in niche segment yeah i think it belongs in the niche segment the design stands out a lot it doesn't seem like it's trying to be any other phone one thing i still don't like is the bottom bezel not being even i think that's one thing which is kind of a deal breaker but that being said uh, they call this the suitcase design for the gray one it kind of does look like that when you zoom in and if, if i'm able to include any picture in the post edit then i will uh, show it to you um the specs are virtually the same for almost all the phones in this price range it's the implementation of it that really matters um and i really like this phone like it just looks very premium for some reason uh, the camera bump doesn't look that great but apart from that i just think it looks pretty decent and uh, it has a really good refresh rate which uh, the realme 9 pro and the oneplus uh, not Tuti did not have, so I would add it to the targets a certain niche audience like Athar said. Yeah, so that's it for this episode. It's probably been a pretty long one. Uh, hopefully, we are able to post it quickly. And yeah, this is the sub thirty k. My favorite, even though it targets a niche audience, is the uh, nothing phone one, which I know many people are saying it was over hyped. I think it lived up to the hype, but yeah. So hopefully you like this video. We are trying to come up with more uh, videos in the future. I mean, obviously things are a bit busy for us with our studies and tests coming up, but uh, we'll try our best, and we'll obviously have an episode coming out. We'll try at least every week, and don't forget to listen to the podcast. We need to pull the numbers up there, and even share our YouTube channel. Talk talk to other people about it. Talk about the Indian tech scene. lots of news going on with some brands falling into some controversies apple and their production uh the iphone prices and yeah and i guess that's it for this video we'll catch you guys in the next one bye